Welcome to the solutions to the waves and sound problem set, problems numbers one, two, three, and four. Problem one, what happens to the wavelength of a wave? So what happens to the wavelength, that's lambda, on a string when the frequency f is doubled? Assume that the tension in the string remains constant and tension is capital T. Um, just looking ahead here for number two, they ask what happens to the speed of the wave on a string when the frequency is doubled. Assume that the tension in the string remains constant. So we see two similar questions, but number one asks for the impact on the wavelength. Number two asks for the impact on the speed. But in both cases, the frequency is doubled, and in both cases, the tension in the string remains constant. To do both of these problems, we have to first understand the relationship between the tension in the string and how it impacts anything with, related to um, the wave equation. Ultimately, in both these problems, the wave equation, V equals F lambda, and I've left spaces in front of the F and the lambda so we can manipulate them if we need to. In both these problems, V equals F lambda, the wave equation is what is going to be analyzed. However, we also need to understand the relationship between the tension in the string and any wave characteristics associated with that. And the characteristic that the tension controls is the speed. And the equation that goes with that is the speed of a wave in a string, V, equals square root of T tension over mu. Mu, in this case, is not a coefficient of friction. It has a different um, quantity assigned in this case. Mu is linear density. And we calculate linear density as mass per unit length. The mass of the string divided by the length of the string is the linear density. And we divide that into the tension, take the square root, and that gives us the speed. All right, so let's take a look at what's going on here. Assume that the tension in the string remains constant. So if the tension is not going to change, that means the speed remains constant. So we come over here to V equals F lambda. Our speed remains constant. They've doubled the frequency. So mathematically, what has to happen to the wavelength? What has to, of course, happen is that the wavelength has to be halved. So there's your answer to number one, is that the wavelength becomes halved. Number two, what happens to the speed of wave on a string when the frequency is doubled? Assume the tension in the string remains constant. So again, they doubled the frequency, but this time they ask for the impact on the speed. Well, once again, since the speed, I'm sorry, since the tension remained constant, the speed remains constant. So this is a trick question in this. Uh, number two is kind of a twi uh, trick question that since the tension remains constant, the speed remains constant, and doubling the frequency has no impact. Okay, moving on to number three. We have a wave traveling in the positive x direction has a frequency of 25 hertz and is shown in the diagram below. Find the amplitude, wavelength, period, and speed of the wave. Okay. Let's start with the amplitude. We are shown over here that the distance from the crest to the trough is 18 centimeters. Well, we know from previous study that the amplitude is from the rest position of the wave to the peak of the crest or bottom of the trough. That would be half the distance indicated, so the amplitude is 9 centimeters. Wavelength. The wavelength is from one point on a wave to that identical point on the next wave. Well, in the diagram, they show the distance from the crest to the trough to be 10 centimeters. 
Well, we need for distance from this point on this wave to that identical point on the next wave. And of course, that would be an additional 10 centimeters. So the total wavelength is 20 centimeters. C, the period we know is the inverse of the frequency. We're given the frequency as 25 hertz, so the inverse of 25 is 0 0.04 seconds. Lastly, D, they want the speed of the wave. Well, V equals F lambda. The frequency is 25. The wavelength we found to be 20 centimeters. We'll put that in proper notation, or um, standard units, rather. And that would be 0.2 meters. And multiplying uh, gives us, well, one-tenth of 25 would be 2.5. So two-tenths would be double that, so 5 meters per second. All right, lastly, number four. A back and detect small object such as an insect whose size is approximately equal to one wavelength. So it's one lambda. That's the size of the insects a bat can detect. Of the sound the bat makes. If the bat emits a chirp at a frequency of 60 hertz, there's F, and if the speed of sound in the air is 340 meters per second, that's V, what is the smallest insect a bat can detect? Well, since the smallest insect a bat can detect equals one wavelength, what they're really asking us to solve for is the wavelength, and hence we know the size of the bat, the, I'm sorry, size of the insect the bat can detect. So we go ahead and start with our wave equation, V equals F lambda. We're told our speed of sound in air is 340. We're told our frequency that the bat is emitting is 60 kilohertz. 60 times 10 to the third uh, hertz. Just for reference, by the way, um, the limit of human hurt hearing is 20,000 hertz. Um, so that would be 20 kilohertz. So this is three times the limit of human hearing. We go ahead and we divide, and 340 divided by 60 times 10 to the third, and we should get 5.7 times 10 to the negative 3 meters. And just for reference, so we understand how big that is, 10 to the negative 3 is milli, so that would be 5.7 millimeters. So an insect that's got a total length just greater than half a centimeter. Okay. Bats are pretty amazing critters, uh, and we'll likely talk more about them as we proceed in our waves and sound unit. Okay, in class tomorrow, you'll be completing number five and six uh, uh, for a more introductory study on waves.